Here's another little secret, too. If you zoom in like this, right, a lot of times if you go back and forth between the left and right arrows really fast, you can see how the beginning of your selection and the end are pretty much exactly the same, right? Because it's like a loop right there. Hey, mate, having your beat locked to the grid with the proper tempo is still one of the most important things you can do before you start a recording or a mixing session. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. And if you don't know yet, this channel is all about helping you to record and mix better and faster. So if you ain't already did it, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, drop down in the comments and say, Wavy, I'm gang gang. <laughs> all right. So today, man, I'm going to be doing a revamp of the actual very first video that I ever dropped on YouTube. And I started my YouTube channel off with this video because I feel like, and still do, feel like that it's one of the most important techniques that you can learn and one of the most important things that you can do and should be doing in every single one of your sessions. So not only does it help you to find the tempo and yes this name of this video is all about identify beat right and so for the last three years if you've been watching me and you're still struggling with identify beat make sure you watch this video again because you need to learn this method of finding your sessions tempo it's really easy there's a few steps involved but you're going to be learning a lot even if you're a beginner brand new to pro tools working in this method learning to use these tools that i'm about to show you is really going to help you out with other tasks in the future like doing edits stutter steps and all that that y'all keep asking me yo what's the best way to do that well having your session locked to the grid is in fact the best way to be able to do all of that so here we go i'm gonna go ahead and break down how to use identify beat to find the tempo of your session now this could be any beat it doesn't just have to be a stereo beat it could be a full multi-track any um audio that you have that has a regular tempo um in there you know a standard tempo that's that's happening in that session and identify beat can even be used to create tempo maps if you really want to get advanced to create tempo maps for audio who that has a varying tempo over time so even if the tempo is changing throughout the session we can even create tempo maps for that now the benefit of locking the tempo in is that we get to use pro tools most powerful editing mode and that's grid mode it just makes it so much easier to do things like fly the hook meaning copying it from one place to the next or do those stutter steps that we were talking about or any other types of edits and arrangements that you need to make you can do it all in time with the music but pro tools needs to know what the actual tempo of your session is and then we got to be locked to the grid to do that all right so step one in using identify beat is to make at least a two bar selection starting with the drums all right now before i even jump into that i was just on live earlier and i had somebody telling me like that they use a few other methods like a website or something to find the tempo and other stuff like that's cool but if you really want to be an editing ninja and you want to do things the professional way do it the wavy way. All right. So again, step one is to make a two bar selection, at least a two bar selection, starting with the drums. Now I say start with the drums because the transients are going to be a lot easier, a lot clearer to work with than any other part of the song. So let's see if I start this song off, I'm going to start it from the beginning. Even just looking at this wave file, I can see where the very first drum hit is, right? So we got whatever this intro stuff is. And then right about here, that drum hits in. So let's go ahead and start off in slip mode okay now i'm switching over from grid to slip mode because as i'm working in grid you see that it is harder for me to well it's not harder but it's really impossible for me to choose exactly where i want to place my cursor or selections while i'm in grid mode without adding additional modifiers so um, i'm just going to jump into slip mode right now to keep this real easy and i'm even going to do this a step further i'm going to make my selection as the song is playing to do this, I'm just going to use my down arrow to start my selection, the up arrow to end the selection. Okay, so let's just rewind. Step one is to make at least a two bar selection, starting with the drums. I'm going to use my down arrow to start the selection, the up arrow to end the selection. All right. So just watch how I count out my bars. So we're just going to start playing this from the beginning. 
Again, I can see that my drum section comes in right here, so I'm just getting ready. Here we go. Down, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, and up, okay? So again, I just made a rough two bar selection. Let me zoom in a little bit. I'm using T to zoom in. You can use R to zoom out as long as you have your command focus turned on. So I'm zooming in so I can see my selection a little better, right? And we can see that, okay, I was a little bit late on the beginning, a little bit early on the end. That's fine. But the main thing is how I count my bars. I think that's where some of y'all are going wrong is that counting your bars in the right way. So again, I'm going to do this down. That's actually one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. And then I hit the up key, um, the up arrow, not on the fourth count, but after the fourth count. OK, so it's really on the one of the next bar that you're going to be ending at. I see a lot of y'all will hit get to the four and because four is at the end, you hit it. But really, the four, you ain't letting that four live. Let me show you what I mean. Take a look at that. Can y'all see that? Yeah. So we got one, two, three, and four, right? If I were to close this out, if I were to stop, let me make sure my mic is on. If I were to stop on four, right? We're counting the spaces. So between one and four, there's only three spaces, one bar, two bar, three bars. That's only three bars if you stop on the fourth count. You want to stop after the fourth count, which is really going to be the fifth count or the one of the next bar. I really hope that makes sense. I'm going to do it again in Pro Tools so that y'all can see um, here. Here we go. Let that play. Uh, here we go. Down, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, and up, okay? Cool, so that's my rough selection. So that's step one, is to make at least a two bar selection, starting with your drums. Now, once we look at this, let's just go ahead and zoom in. You can see, as I'm zooming in, I can see my waveforms a little bit more clearly here. And so the beginning of my selection, I'm cutting off that uh, waveform. If you hit the right arrow on your keyboard, that'll take you to the end of your selection. If you want to get back to the beginning, you can just hit the left arrow again. So and you can see I'm cutting off this one at the end a little bit too. So we can see where the spikes are in our transients of our waveforms that indicate the, the kick drum hits in this point, which is going to indicate the start and end of the bars for us. Okay, So I'm going back to the beginning of my selection. And step two is going to be Zoom in and refine your selection. So we need to refine our selection, make it better, make it cleaner, make it tighter. So we just roughed it out by using those arrows, doing it by ear. But now I'm going to zoom in and really tighten it up. So holding the shift key, I'm going to go ahead and move that selection right where it needs to be. I'm also working with the smart tool, okay? Um, so again, I love this method because it, it includes so much. With the smart tool, you gotta stay on the top half to access your selector tool. If you're not comfortable with that, you can just go ahead and get the selector tool, but I like to use my smart tool to do this. So I'm standing at the top half of the uh, track. If I bring it to the bottom half of the track, it'll be the grabber tool. So working with selections, we need to stay at the top half. But I'm not done there. I need to zoom in even more because the more you zoom in, the more detail you can see. So every time I zoom in, I'm just going to get more and more detail. And what I want to do is get to basically what's called a zero crossing point. So I want my selection to start on a zero crossing and end on a zero crossing as much as possible or as close to it as possible. So since this is a stereo track where we have my left channel at the top, the right channel at the bottom, so you can see that there's a slight difference between these two channels. That's perfectly fine. This left channel is on a zero crossing. The zero crossing is when that waveform hits the solid line that's going through it. That's really where you want to make all your edits. There is zero sound at that point. And if you do all your edits at zero crossing points, you won't even need to make fades in your session. That's a little another little tip, all right? But I'm starting off at that zero crossing point, right? So I got that. I'm going to hit the right arrow to go to the end of my selection. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see where I'm at. Because if I'm zoomed in so tight, oh, I don't know where the hell I'm at. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Okay. I see that this is the start of my next beat. And I need to start in my selection before here. Right? 
Another little trick that I like to do is go back to the beginning and see what those waveforms look like. So I see that my selection is starting with a tiny hump, then a dip. If I go back to the end, you see we have a tiny hump, then a dip right there. So that lets me know I'm in the right spot. And as I zoom in, that selection is ending right on the zero crossing point. All right. Pretty good, right? So the next step is just going to be to go ahead and listen to this and make sure that it's a seamless um, loop, right? When I play this back, it should be a seamless loop. If you don't have loop playback already enabled, you can go up to the options menu and then make sure that you have loop playback turned on, all right? And then when you play this, it should loop seamlessly and continuously. Cool, nice seamless loop, Don't didn't know where it started or ended. The next step, we're pretty much almost done here, so we got our nice little loop. What we need to do now is tell Pro Tools how long this selection is, right? Because Pro Tools right now don't know. Actually, if I look up at the uh, start and end selection fields, Pro Tools thinks that this selection is three bars, one beat, 877 ticks. That's based on the tempo that defaults to 120 beats per minute. But what I'm gonna say is no, this isn't three bars in one beat. This is actually just two bars. By me saying, yo, Pro Tools, this is two bars, then what they were gonna do is then generate the tempo, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command I, or you can go up to the event menu and choose identify beat. I almost forgot where it's at because I never go into the menus because I'm a ninja, all right? So identify beat. And then again, this is where you just want to tell Pro Tools how long your selection is. Now, you just don't tell them, yo, it's two bars. You have to tell them by uh, defining the start location and the end location. Now, for me, I like to keep these things simple. Even though this is probably really starting this selection, it's probably starting at the fourth bar. I'm going to say that this is bar one and that the end of my selection is bar three. That means that there is two bars in between, right? Kind of like that example that we went through, right? I know that's confusing sometimes because you might put in bar one, but like, right, if I start at, hopefully that's right, if I start at bar one and end at bar three, how many bars is between there? Two, okay? So we starting at bar one, beat one, ending at bar three, beat one. That means that this is a two bar selection. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. My tempo is then generated in my tempo ruler. If your tempo ruler isn't showing for some reason, Remember, you can show and hide things in Pro Tools easily by going up to the View menu. You can go to Rulers and then make sure that your tempo ruler is being displayed, okay? So this is now giving me a tempo of 68.999996, which basically means that this tempo is a little freak at 69, okay? <laughs> All right, so with the tempo being 69, I need to go ahead and define that in my session. So I'm gonna hold the Option key to delete this bar beat marker. All right, you see, we, I'm going to delete this and then enter my tempo by myself. So then that 120, I'm just going to go ahead and change that. And then we can put in 69. All right. The next step is simply going to be to go into grid mode. I like to go somewhere toward the end of the session, make a little loop, one or two bar loop, just by clicking and dragging in grid mode. Right. And my grid value is set to one bar. So each step is going to be a bar. Well, it should be as long as my tempo, right? And somewhere near the end, because if your tempo is off a little bit, it'll still sound right near the beginning on where you made that selection. But the further you go away from that original selection, if the tempo is off, it's going to drift, 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 and uh, it'll be more apparent that you're wrong. OK, even we can zoom in here and see, wow, that's pretty much right on the zero crossing points there. And then on the end, we pretty much in the exact same spots as the beginning. So we can even see that that's going to work out. But let's listen to it to confirm again. Yeah, pretty, pretty easy, right? Um, yeah, man, and that is uh, pretty much it. So now I'm ready to start recording and mixing and editing my session all on grid using the most powerful edit mode there is, all right? I'm gonna show y'all a couple of examples of some stuff y'all could do, but first let's just run through this whole thing one more time. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo everything, get back to uh, the default. And this time I'm gonna do it a little bit quicker so that you can see like a real time workflow of how to use Identify Beat. So um, I'm gonna just start off playing the session. Once we get to my drums, I'm gonna count out my two bars. 
I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to tighten it up. And we're going to get up out of there. Here we go. Down. Two, two, four, two, two, three, four, and up. All right. Cool. I'm going to stop that playback. I'm going to go ahead and start to zoom in. Um, holding shift. Um, I'm going to move back to slip mode. Holding shift. I'm just going to adjust my selection to that zero crossing point there. Zoom in. Make sure I'm right up on it. Hit the right arrow. Zoom out a little bit. Do the same thing on the end of my selection just to really define that selection starting end point as I need to. Here's another little secret, too. If you zoom in like this, right, a lot of times if you go back and forth between the left and right arrows really fast, you can see how the beginning of your selection and the end are pretty much exactly the same, right? Because it's like a loop right there. So and a lot of times on these type of beats like this, these type beats, <laughs> um, you will notice that the beginning and the end are the same. And then when you go back and forth like this, if they overland each other, that's how you know that your selection is accurate. If I change this, right, now you see how that's doing that, right? That's letting me know something is wrong uh, in that selection. But if I go back and get it right on, oh, it's still not as perfect as it was before, but whatever. There we go. Cool. So I got my two bar selection. We're going to hit command I start location one in location three. I always use the same thing no matter what, because I don't really care what bar and beat is being marked as. I really just want the tempo and damn, I got it so close that that 0.999 stuff wasn't even there. So the closer, the more accurate your selection is, the more accurate the results will be. And you won't even have to round up or anything like that. So like, um, you saw me round up when it says 68.999. I knew that that was based on my selection not being 100% accurate. So if you realize that if your selection is really, really off, you're going to be having to do a lot of rounding and guesswork versus just trying to make your selection as tight as it can be. And in this case, that selection must have been perfect because Pro Tools was able to uh, determine that my tempo is 69 beats per minute. And I don't even really need to delete this. I can if I want to, that little bar beat marker, and then put in 69. Oop. Double click the song start marker, put in 69. Now, um, yeah, and then we can use grid mode from here on out. Let's just double check this. Oh, something, something happened. Okay, so I'm glad that that actually happened because what happened was when I double click that song star marker you see how it moved right it's easy to move that so be careful that you don't accidentally um, move your song start marker uh, i think i did i move it again i'm tripping good all right there we go so now i'm just gonna double click it make sure i don't move it 69 all right cool so yeah just make sure you don't Right. And then you can do some cool stuff here. Like if I wanted to go up, change my grid value to maybe a quarter note um, and I could do like a stutter of this quarter note. Easy. All right. Maybe even this last one, I just change it to an eighth note. We can do some more funky. Right. Maybe even let's change back to one bar, maybe even move this whole drop right here to the beginning instead of this intro section. We don't want that. Let's just go there and do that. And everything's going to be in time because we got the tempo. Shout out to the telemarketer that's calling me right now. <laughs> All right. And that's it, man. That is how you would use identify beat. It is so important to do that in your session so that you can uh, use the most powerful editing mode, which is grid mode to fly hooks, to do edits, to do stutters and everything else that you could possibly think of. Even having this makes your delays work in time. Um, it just makes working in Pro Tools so much better when you have the tempo. Drop down in the comments. Let me know what you think about this video and let me know if you are using identify beat already because of the video I put up about three years ago, man. Thanks for watching this. I'm Wavy Wayne. Check out wavywayne.com for more help and more ways to help you record and mix better and faster. Be dope.